we are on step six of a seven part series on how to build a brand from scratch. A brilliant question that was asked at the very beginning. I did share the question if you want to go back and see it by Claire in Leeds. So we're on step number six. This is where we're talking about how do you illuminate? How do you put even more exposure on the product or service that you've been going through this process on? Now, we have talked a lot about your product or the service all throughout this, this point of, of difference and your unique gifts that you're bringing to the world. But now we need to talk about you. Yes, you. <laughs> we need to put the illumination and the spotlight on you and your personal brand because people buy from people that they know, like and trust. <laughs> If they don't know you or they don't feel like they trust you, then they're certainly not going to buy any products from you or any services from you. So this is the step where we need to start really putting that focus on you personally. So this is where you need to make sure you've got a sparkling bio otherwise known as a biography. This is where you need to create a hundred word statement about you that first of all starts by demonstrating your gifts in the world and showing off exactly uh, any accolades or um, accreditations that you have, any awards that you've won, any memberships you're part of, anything that can position you um, as the expert in your industry followed by your greater mission. What is it that you're wanting to do or your vision? You could get your vision and mission in there. What are you building? Who are you building it for and why? Why are you doing it? And why do you care so much about what you're doing? It's really important to get behind the person who's building the business, the person behind the product. Years and years ago, when I was first building my design agency, we learned the hard way that people really do go to your About Us section of your website more than you might think. So we launched our new website and we spent so much time on the products and the services and making sure everything was ready for those that when it came to actually the About Us section of our website, we didn't have anything on there. And so people were coming to our website, they were jumping on the homepage, going straight from the homepage to about us. And then when they couldn't find us, because we said, oh, we'll sort ourselves out later, when they couldn't find that, they then were hemorrhaging from the site. So we weren't keeping them there, which was a massive problem. So you want to make sure that your biography is absolutely sparkling. Now, if you're not quite sure what to talk about or how to talk about yourself, I would suggest you go back to your earlier days like think about between the ages of naught to ten what happened to you that made the experience that happened to you then such a big part of what you're doing now what was it that happened to you when you were between 10 and 20 years old between 20 and 30 years old 30 and 40 40 and 50 fill in the gap I don't know how old you are but really sit down with yourself you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your business to really come up with that story and here's the thing right I was filming on a documentary a couple of years ago out in San Diego with that one I've been on a few documentaries this one was in San Diego and at the end of filming this one particular day I think it was day two or three and um, and we're waiting to go off to the next uh, location for filming and as we're, we're just standing around and chatting and they, they'd taken 20 um, change well actually they took 100 global change makers and divided us across locations. They flew us out to those locations, put us under an insane amount of pressure to see what does a real leader do under pressure, and then they filmed the result, which was a process I wouldn't like to repeat at the time. I look back on it fondly now, <laughs> but when we were going through all these things they were doing to us, it was not fun. So we were at the end of filming this, this day, and Catherine Hathaway, she was one of the amazing thought leaders on this documentary, and Catherine were just standing there chatting, waiting to go to the next location, and she says to me, Sammy, what did they call you when you were younger? Like, what was your nickname when you were younger? And there were two other people, the, the producer of the series, Bright Loreano, she stood to my left, and there was somebody else here, I can't remember who that was, but so th there was four of us stood there. And she says this to me, and before I even have the opportunity to think about what's about to leap out of my mouth, I say, fat. And she does this, and Sprite does that, and so does this other lady, and I do that, and I couldn't believe that that came out of my mouth, and I said, would you just excuse me for a moment? <laughs> and they said, sure. So I go off and I just have this little moment with myself and think, where did that even come from? And
and it, I, it, I, what what came up for me was just unbelievable. I couldn't believe just from that one question. I mean, it was just wow. And the next thing I see, I'm just I'm thinking, where, oh my god, how embarrassing! I just said that out loud in front of really important people. Like that's what was going through my mind. <laughs> and um, but where did it even come from? And the next thing I see this like this movie in my mind of my first day of school well I was an only child you see till I was 11 years old and so and my grandma used to look after me while my mum went to work and my dad was at work so I I grew up with my grandma pretty much and um, she used to live quite close to the school that I was going to go to of course I like I because I had no brothers and sisters I used to play out with the other kids who were living on the same road as my grandma um, but because I was a year younger than them, they were all going to school before me. So there I am every morning looking over the, the, the wall, saying hello to everybody as they go past, wishing that I could be going to school with them. I couldn't wait to grow up. I don't know about you, but I couldn't wait to grow up fast enough, right? So it comes to my first day of school. So off we go. Got my little uniform on. I'm proud as anything. I'm like, yes, I'm grown up now. I'm five years old. I'm grown up. So off we go. And uh, and I'm, I'm in there and I'm just just in wonder at all the magic and the noise and everything that's going on around me. And uh, and the bell goes. So it's playtime. Yes. <laughs> the thing that I've even been waiting for the most has come. So we go running out into the playground and I'm playing with some of my friends, which was really nice. And then I spot uh, this group of girls who are skipping and they've got the, they're playing the skipping rope game. You probably know of it with it one, two, three, one, two, three, and they're skipping over it. And if they catch it or if they mess up, then they have to go and somebody else's turn. And um, and so I go running over to this group of girls. Well, by that point, I haven't experienced any kind of rejection before until that moment. And of course, like I'm, I'm just been with my friends and everybody has, has been friendly enough, so I'm not experienced in this. And this was the very first time that I experienced blatant rejection. So I go running up to this group and this one girl, she puts her hand up right to my face, like pretty much in my face. And she says, go away, fat. So you're too fat to play here. And in that moment, not only was I totally crushed, hugely embarrassed. I mean, even at five years old, I had an ego. I think we all do, right? When something like that happens and it just totally crushed me and the thing was, I, I just, I didn't know what to do with that. And so I just took it in and I processed it. And, you know, I carried that around for the rest of my life up until this moment. So I remember this moment. I go back to Sprite and Catherine and the other lady that was there. And I just said to them, I'm really sorry. I can't believe that came out of my mouth. I've gone and had a word with myself. <laughs> and um, I've actually just had a really strong vision of where that comes from. And I've not even thought about that moment in my entire life until now. And they said, go on, tell us about it. So I told them. And Catherine says to me, the lady that had originally <coughs> asked me the question, she says, Sammy, what a wonderful gift. I said, really? Is that a gift? And is it funny how we can't see those gifts, but they can? She says, yeah, what a wonderful gift. Don't you see what you do for people now? And I said, you're going to have to enlighten me. She said, you are on a mission to make sure that people aren't branded or labelled in a way that, that isn't them. You help people to show up in the world in their authenticity, to don't, don't care about what other people are saying. This is you. You make that decision about your label. You make that commitment to who you are. You own it. And she said, how amazing that you let that girl brand you all those years ago and ever since then you've been on a mission to brand other people so they don't get that kind of brand on them that isn't right for them. Like you, you're you on a real mission. Don't you realise what a gift that was? And I, it was just like a massive like hammer on the head <laughs> at that moment. I hadn't realised that A, that was a gift. I hadn't even remembered that that was something as part of my upbringing and I hadn't even thought about it in years. But yes, I had let her brand me. I let her put her label on me and I carried it around. And guess what? I also lived up to it. So the, the label that you give yourself, the way you illuminate your brand is to first decide who you are. You've got to set that vision for who you are as a personal brand. I, I created a video on this very topic, how to build a personal brand. It's in this channel. Go and have a look for it. 
I created a video where I actually, I don't talk about this story, but I talk about you stepping into your own label. You create that label because if you don't, somebody else will. And guess what? When somebody else brands you, you do step into that label. You do step into it. And it's very challenging to even see that you've been, that you've made it your story. And actually, that might not be your story. That might not be who you are. So I want you in this step to to really think about how you're going to illuminate your real gifts. And the real gift is not really the qualifications. They're just good things. You know, in America, people love to, to know that you're the CEO of the organization. In the UK, they don't really care about that. You could be a trailblazer or a visionary or, you know, you could be anything. So depending on where you're doing your business, obviously, uh, you know, accolades and accreditations and awards, they mean something um, to, to different people. But that might not mean anything to your ideal clients. So, you know, if you haven't got any of those things, you're going to work up to getting them. I didn't have them at the beginning either, you know, but I've got all of the, those things now. But the key thing is that you just start somewhere and then you can just start improving it and add into it as you start to build your brand and build your career. So I want you in this step to go back and and just spend some time. You owe it to yourself and your business, as I already said, to spend some time looking back from zero to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, whatever age you're at now, I want you to go in 10 year increments and think about the different experiences and the different stories and the different things that have happened to you during those periods so that you can look back on them and really recap and say, that's why I do what I do now. That's why I am who I am. That's why I'm building what I'm building. You know, ultimately, I'm a brilliant community builder. I built the Brand Builders Club community. That you know, brand builders. I've got a hundred and about 150 brand builders at the moment from all over the world who I'm working with personally, and they're all working with each other. That's amazing. That's a legacy process. Uh, you know, a much higher end of client going in there. They're all building a legacy. They're all building something global. If that's you, if you feel that calling in your heart, then drop me an email and let's have a conversation. It might not be right for you. And I'll tell you if it's not. Then we've got the How to Build a Brand group. There's nearly 6,000 members in that group at the point of me making this video. It's a much bigger community. But I create community because I was so freaking lonely as a child. I don't want anybody else to experience the loneliness that I felt. So I've been on an all-out mission to do that. It's all part of my story. It's all part of the fabric and the, the, that thread that is woven through everything that I do. There's a reason why you're so flipping great at what you do. There's a reason that you were put on this planet. There's a reason and a purpose for which you were created. There was a moment that you were born for. And if you don't feel like you've had that moment already, then let's create it and let's create it together. So if you've enjoyed today's show, then please do subscribe and let others know how they can as well. Please share it, share it as much as you can. Let's support as many people in the world as we can to really brand build and grow the business that they want to, to be that drop they want to see in the world and to be that drop they want to model somebody like you who's being the drop. So go out there and do that. Do your homework today just to, to really think about that bio. If you need any help with that, Go and check out the Seven Step Brand Kickstarter system. That's what I created. It's the entire positioning and pitch piece around anything that you want to sell. So you go through it on your business, you go through it on your personal brand, and you go through it for every single product or service or program. Whatever you want to sell, you use this system to go through and create it. So check out the Seven Step Brand Kickstarter system to help you go through this process a lot easier when you're creating your own positioning story. So I have a question for you as always. So your question for today is, what is your best business affirmation or mantra? Let's see if we can inspire each other. I want to know what your mantras are. And maybe there'll be other mantras that are put in the comments that you think, oh, I'll borrow that. I'll have that one as well. Uh, I do that quite regularly. So give me some ideas about what your mantra or your affirmation is. When things are really testing you, what is it that you say to yourself that gets you out of that that challenging hole that, that lifts you right back up out of that well and gets you on fire again. I'd love to know. So take care, put your comments below and I'll see you on the next show for step number seven. See you there.